Um, we're now part of my favorite segment, where we very much look forward to the interesting discussions with Sayyid Mohsen Shah. Assalamu alaikum. Alaikum salam wa rahmatullah. How are you doing? You okay? Very well, thank you. How are you? I'm good. Welcome. Inshallah. Thank you for having me. Yeah. Um, where you know we, we talk about a lot of different subjects over the last couple of episodes, um, very interesting subjects that mm -hmm. obviously require more than the, the time allocated. But um, today we're going to go to something that's again quite re relevant um, to um, people who are looking to sort of start their own business. Um, and of course, within every walk of life, there is always the Islamic regulations involved. Um, and I should assume that within trade and business, which is quite important because th mm. that's where people's rights come into play, um, there is an Islamic perspective. So, of course, when it comes to business or when it comes to trade, you know, what, what is kind of recommended? What is not recommended? What should we stay away from? Is it easy? Yeah. What's, you know, just go and do anything? Well, how, how's the sort of the Islamic law? Perspective? Mm. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. In accordance with... Uh, say Sadiq Shirazi Hafadullah. First of all, business is, I think all forms of business is trade, isn't it? Yeah. Whether it is a product or a service, you have something that you give in exchange for money. So it's trade. Um, whether that's, you know, like uh, a service, whether that's uh, an actual physical product, um, there's always an exchange mm -hmm. of money and uh, something in return. Um, we see this in, in Islamic history as well. We see the likes of Sayyid Khatija, uh, who, was, who, was a, who used to trade, who used to rent camels. Uh, we see with Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wa alihi, who, who was also a tradesman. So trade has always been with, with Islam, and it's always been, you know, like the culture and heritage, and you could even say the Sunnah of Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wa alihi, to work for oneself and to trade. Um, so when it comes to an uh, individual who wants to trade or go into business for himself. Uh, Sayyid Sadiq goes through, uh, if I grab his asala, he goes through five reasons, um, or five categories, you could say, of earning, which have different ahkam moves to him as well. So one is wajib, if one earns to pay the, ex uh, the expenses of those he's responsible for. All so right. one can go to start trading because he has responsibilities, financial responsibilities. So that's wajib. His wife, it's wajib for him to go and it's wajib for him to go and earn, but it may be wajib for him to go and trade, because working for someone is also trade. You're trading your time and your yeah. efforts, aren't you, for, yeah. for, for a wage? So, but for, it is wajib upon someone that if they have go, got no job, uh, they haven't got any means to earn, that they have to go out and start trading and, and do something. He's responsible for financially responsible, and he must do so. Haram, prohibited, there's a certain um, you know, trade which is haram or someone would trade which is how much is um, such earnings through dealing with alcohol and narcotics one is forbidden to go th towards that trade and one cannot uh, earn a means from that um, Mustahab, such as when one wants to spend on his family so maybe someone is uh, financially comfortable and decides that they want to spend more money uh, on their family it is must, must have for that person to get involved in trade. Undesirable is we do have certain uh, businesses, and shall we go through some, uh, that is undesirable to get into. You shouldn't, it is makro, it is better not to. Or if you are involved in that trade, do so temporarily for a certain amount of time. Okay. I'll give you an example, inshallah we'll discuss more later, but uh, selling coffins, uh, even butchers, mm. yeah, dealing with meat, um, you know, it is, mm -hmm. is, is makro. Uh, obviously, there's a necessity for this, yeah. but you shouldn't really get involved. And inshallah, we'll discuss a little bit more later. And then you have that which is mobile trade, which is mobile. Um, if you do it, there's not much uh, reward, and if you do it, there's no uh, punishment for it neither. Going further into trade, we do have um, a hadith from Imam Sadiq alayhi salam, and this is from uh, Wasail al Shia, volume 17, page 382, in regards to business, in regards to buying and selling and trading. Whoever wants to engage in trade, then he should excel in learning the teachings of his religion in order to know what is halal for him and what is haram. And whoever does not learn the teachings of his religion but engages in the business of trade, he would be entangled in prohibited acts without him knowing it. Mm -hmm. It is very important that before you get involved in business in trade, you understand the ahkam laws pertaining to that subject matter. Yeah. 
and you go off and, and you learn and then if you are to get involved then you know that you are not committing haram and that inshallah you are benefiting your akhirah with this trade. But it's also benefiting in this world isn't it because you say a business you decide okay it may be um, something that's not desirable but you think oh I need to earn so I'm going to go and do it and then they, people pursue with these things but actually the barakah is not there is it? It really doesn't take off and you think in short term you may have a benefit Certainly long term it's not beneficial because obviously like you're saying you're akhira anyway. But the impact on the halal haram income on yourself, on your offspring, there are guidance. Yeah, there yes, are, there, there, there's major implications that if mm. you are earning haram money, um, whatever you purchase is haram, whatever you intake. So I went to get food, even that food is halal. That food, you know, if, if I have haram money, and I put that money towards petrol to drive to the mosque to eat food. Mm. Technically, that, that, that was all haram because it, it's the source of it is haram yeah. money. It's not a small thing. So to no, it, 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 your lifestyle just yeah. becomes all of it becomes haram yeah. simply because your lifestyle is driven by haram money. So it has a big, big implication on, yeah. onto your lifestyle and also onto your akhirah. It's, it's, it's very, very uh, sensitive, and that we need to actually take a lot of care. Mm. With, with our money and making sure that it is from halal means, definitely. Absolutely. It's not small, yeah. Sorry. Brilliant. Brilliant. So you mentioned, like, um, obviously there are different categories of um, when a business or a trade falls under wajib, yes. halal. Makruh was very interesting. Yes. Because although it's not recommended, mm -hmm. but, like, it's a, it's a, it's a skill, it's a, mm. it's a form of income. There is, there is wisdom behind it. Mm. Uh, I mean, if, if we go through, um, it is makru to sell land and property. Uh, what? <laughs> I think a lot of people will be like, what? Mm. Yeah. I'll go through the ruling properly. The sale of land or property, uh, perhaps the reason for the discouragement is often the involvement of cheating or false claims of expectations or unfavorable standards or wide rooms for disagreement in the kind of business and transaction. I think the other thing with, because you need to understand this as well, so in Islam, under Islamic government, uh, everyone has a right to land. Yeah. And the way, mm. how do you get land? How do you claim land? You develop it. So there's a piece of land. If you develop it, that's your land. So I think it's trying to encourage more yeah, people to go and develop land rather than actually buying and but, selling it. Uh, uh, but the thing is, number one, in this day and age, the, the means to be able to develop lands is way beyond what we have. Mm. Um, number one. Number two, I think in those days they were given land and there was not a lot yes. of people. So mm -hmm. if you're given land, you're given land in favorable places, which isn't too far from the central business area, for example. Um, number three, it doesn't cost a lot to develop it. Or, and I, what I assume they mean by developing it is more crops. Yes, vegetation. Grow, yeah, yeah, agriculture. Grow, grow, grow the ground so that you can, you can be able mm -hmm. to sell something that grows from it. Definitely. So I mean, Sheikh Banju had a really great show. Uh, you know, hopefully you can get it on YouTube. Mm -hmm. It was on the Mountain TV as well. Um, and he was discussing how, uh, with um, having this free taxation, you could say, or this free claim to land, how it could actually eradicate poverty. Mm -hmm. That there is a big crisis right now, even in the West, yeah. in regards to the, the price of property and people um, cannot afford to, to become first time buyers and get onto the property ladder. Um, Imagine if this law was implemented, that any land you could take and cultivate, that belongs to you. That's what actually America was based on, wasn't it? That they had so much land that they invited the Europeans over and gave them free land to cultivate and then mm. develop into their own. And that's how they brought so many other communities from sort mm. of northern Europe. But um, So it has worked in the past in non-Islamic you know, countries as well, in developing a whole nation. Mm. But, but if we look at the modern world... The, you know, London, and you've got a business where you're, you know, buying and selling property because that's the corporate world we live in, capitalist society. I mean, How does that work? Yeah, I mean, I, I think uh, if we, you know, step outside uh, Islamic law for a second, yeah. uh, property is a great investment. Mm. Um, the return on it is, is phenomenal. Yeah. You're looking at what, 10, 20 percent almost, uh, you know, and, and um, people who actually own properties in, in the West, they actually don't want to sell, they want to buy more and more. Mm. And then, you know, I can understand that it is very, very appealing to people. But fiqh is fiqh, and it comes from the Ahlul Bayt. And is it, there is, is wisdom behind yeah, it. Is it, it deterring is. the greed behind Possibly. wanting more and you've got it, whereas 
there are people that are needy and cannot afford not, it. Are we not avoiding necessarily that? because, because it's, it's, I think it's more to do with, with uh, social um, sciences mm. and implications mm. because Islam doesn't discourage people from trading, it actually encourages mm. it. And it's telling people to go work for yourself and it's kind of get involved in trade and halal risk. Um, so we're not against people working, we're not even against people earning and earning more. But I was thinking more about people who own properties and then we had this tragedy in London, Grenfell Tower. Yeah. Homeless people, yes. you know, didn't have places to yes. live and there were empty properties in that borough of mm -hmm. Chelsea and Kensington. Millionaire properties not living there because they live abroad. Mm -hmm. So are we avoiding those kind of social implications where, you know, we're Maybe hogging so. these properties and we're not sharing maybe, out. maybe so and mm. I, I really believe that um, with with land and, and cultivating um, you know it's everyone's right to land this is what Islam teaches us that when you are born you have a right to land mm. not that not the other way around that oh you know just bought your your you have a yeah. right to a national national yeah. identity and that's it yeah you know you have a right to to have a land so that you technically can eradicate homelessness the whole world if we were to allow people free citizens yeah mm. just come a different world you, you know it? if you want mm. you know and back then in the middle east everyone lived in tents mm. i don't think that's very expensive to yeah. you know it's very feasible to set up so imagine if you came you cultivated a bit of land you put your tents on it there you go you're you're, mm. you're not homeless anymore so okay so um so butchers uh, we also mentioned that as doing macro as well indeed yes um, it is makru uh, for the butcher trade, the uh, slaughtering of animals, and also uh, the selling of coffins as well mm. is makru. To do with uh, butchers, I'm, I'm, I think it's on the, the terms of that one becomes desensitized mm. to blood and meat and butchery, you could say. Yeah. Um, they always say, yes, yeah, slaughtery. And slaughtery. I think they always say a, a butcher really knows how to uh, stab someone. They don't know exactly what part of the body to, to mm. hit and to cut. So I think it's, it's along those lines of. It's amazing, isn't it? How it's it's the laws aren't based on just the physical nature. It's it's embedding it's, both yeah, your you know elements psycho, of psychology, yeah. Yeah, mm -hmm. psychology as well. Yeah. Um, there, there's a uh, there's a country in Europe. I don't know which one it is. I can't remember. But they they let butchers do their job for six months. Oh, right. Then they send them to the farms to actually um, cater and to for the animals. Look after the animals. The animals. Oh, wow. So to to give them that humanitarian mm. to that, that care yeah mm. so they, they switch it back and forth um for them because if you keep one person being, being a butcher for so long i think it does desensitize them uh, and in a way yeah and takes animals away humanity are... away from them yeah Anything furthermore else? Mm. it is makro to trade uh during the times between the two dawns the dawn of fajr and sunrise so between those two times so from fajr adhan until the sunrise, it is makru to trade between that time. Mm. Which so is how long? Half an hour? <sighs> no, a bit longer than that. An hour think no. about it. Well, at the moment it's about an hour, but in the summertime it's about two, three hours. Oh, okay. So depending oh, on the right, time right, of right, year. Right, right, yeah. So the, the, that time period where you pray your Fajr yeah, Salah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, the start of it. The start, the, the other, mm. until sunrise. It's about an hour and a half. It's makru to do any, yeah. any transaction, any business during that time. Mm. Uh, furthermore, uh, just a side point, it's also um, makru to sleep during that time as well. So when you wake up for Fajr and you pray, yeah. you should stay up until the sun rises. And that, that time should be specifically for Abada. Right. It's makru to go back to sleep. Um, and also, it is makru to interfere in other business transactions in order to buy what others are trying to buy. So there is... Um, so traders. <laughs> yeah. So traders to usurp or to like sabotage or to get wow. a quick one in uh, before someone else is, is, is purchasing. <laughs> it is makru also to, to do such a thing. I was going to say, we have a question. Yes. Um, so maybe bring it in here. Um, just so the question goes salam morning baraka team i wanted to start a business i wanted to know with islamic law which is the best business mm. to go into what should i know and how should i handle customers yeah Asha, so the best business to go into is the businesses which are not makro and not haram now i discussed the uh, makro with you guys quickly to go over haram it is haram for you to trade within anything which we call anum najasa so uh animals such as dogs and pigs um, haram to you know uh, trade with them. Uh, with dogs, it's a little bit different, but with pigs, you're not mm -hmm. allowed to trade mm -hmm. with them. Alcohol, um, not allowed to sell, to buy, to display, to handle, to mm -hmm. deliver, to scan across a but not allowed mm -hmm. whatsoever. Anything to do with alcohol, blood, uh, corpses, blood. Yes, blood. 
What about? Which is a blood bank. Transfusions. I don't think you mean. Yeah. No, no, we're talking about trading, buying and oh, selling. We're not okay. talking about <laughs> donating. All oh, right. The Guffin business is macro. Yeah. So you can, that's just for trading. It's not, you know, if somebody's actually got making the coffins or anything, they can do that, but they can't. Yeah, making the coffins, no. no. Um, I mean, you know, if, if they make it, it's, it's actually buying and selling the coffins, which is macro. Um, mm. Technically, I don't know, do, do people make coffins? Normally, you just go to the fabric shop. And you just buy. Well, uh, they printed ones, they? Yeah, you get, ones, yeah, you get yeah. printed the, the uh, iart and there's verses yeah. on them yeah. and everything. Mm. Interesting. So we've got one last <laughs> moment. Literally got to finish. Um, yeah. Any last pointers that you want to quickly? Any last to business? What I really wanted to do was uh, look at what is mustahab to do with buying and selling. Yeah, I think um, that was a question. There, there are some etiquettes in regards to uh, what is mustahabat. One is obviously to um, to investigate. Uh, the ahkam laws behind what you're going into. Mm -hmm. Secondly, um, not to discriminate between individuals uh, during uh, charging. So, uh, especially like you know, also you know, this I know this person is a friend of mine. Uh, I'll, I'll give yeah. him cheaper, or not even that. But you know, sometimes you get important people coming in. Say a famous scholar or TV personality might come, and then you might say, oh, "I'll charge him less," or you the other way around, I might, might like charge you. him more. You know, mm. um, you know, to, not to discriminate. This is mm. Mustahab, not to discriminate. Um, also, um, to be flexible with the price is Mustahab. Oh, okay. All right. So, so you know, to be, you know, um, no fixed price. Is that what you say? In, 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 so we'll, everyone has to make a profit somehow, but be a bit flexible. Yeah. Uh, I mean, not, not to be, you know, stringent and mm. be like, no, this is mm. it and that's it. Be a little bit flexible. It's okay. Uh, in terms of those people who are purchasing. It is mustahab to either offer more money for what you are purchasing All right. or to take less. So let's say, you know, you ask someone, I'm buying some pistachio nuts. Mm. Uh, how much is a kg of pistachio nuts? Oh, it's five pounds. Uh, you know, I'll give the five pounds. You know what? Just give me 800 grams, 900 grams. This is mustahab to do. And for the person who's selling, it is mustahab to give more. So, you know, if it's, if it's one kg for five pounds, pistachio nuts, you know, here's 1100 no, or, or yeah. so forth. Yeah. And I think this is really nice uh, because it takes away that mm. element of I'm going to go as low as I can to get a bargain yeah. and the seller being I'm going to go as high as I can to get profit. Yeah. If we switch the roles, I think both sides are a bit more generous, uh, a bit more um, uh, more mannerism and, and, and more. Yeah. People will prosper more. In, indeed, indeed. I think people will prosper think we need to. a lot more. And I think you'll get the right price for the good mm. as well, I believe. Brilliant. Thank you so much. So sorry Thank to cut you. you off there. It is no problem. Yeah, it's always a pleasure to speak to you, Sayed. Always a pleasure. Thank so you. Thank you so much. Hope you have a blessed day. Me too. Inshallah. And, yeah. um, and we're going to wrap that to a close now. Um, the episode as well. Uh, morning Barakah. It's always nice to finish with Sayed and his interesting discussions. But on that note, Inshallah, we'll see you in the next episode um, of Morning Barakah. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.